Yo, what is up? You have found We Like the Blazers. I am your host, Ryan Witty Whitledge. And joining me on the other side of the computer screen with what I still no, no, we're no, don't you give me the nose. I'm I'm still weirded out by your mic cover, but Brandon Goldner, how are you doing? Happy Walls Day to you. How's your day going? From the weirdo to the walls till the sweat drips down. I'm good, man. Um, and yeah, this uh this mic cover this by the way, uh, shout out to Terry, who is the artist behind both the third bench logo and this cool Blazers um, uh, yin yang logo. Yeah, that I have to figure out how to. We got the whole summer to figure this out, but the room is still bouncy. This is insulated. It's supposed to cut some of the bounce. I don't know how much it actually works. You're searching behind you for something. I don't know what you're doing. I have to vamp here until you're done. But yeah, man, I'm good. Had a golf lesson today. It was the second one I've had. Shout out to Brandon Deggins, who is a P- PGA trained golf professional and who's been helping me. I will say, Ryan, if you have ever, you know, take it, if you've ever done a thing, and then began taking lessons after you've already been doing the thing. There's a, a, a combination of emotions that happen from hope and elation to, wow, like I'm getting better. I'm learning something to the absolute depths of despair. <laughs> when you realize you're deconstructing something as complicated as a golf swing and man, today was very difficult and uh it's gonna take a lot of motivation and trusting the process for me to pull through but yeah man things are good how are you how are things on your end i i have done that by the way i was searching because my uh one one of my two dogs my little chihuahua she uh she tends to suffer from separation anxiety and so the wife is out and about and and running errands and so i I brought the dog up here and uh she for some reason does not want to lay in her little bed that i brought up here and so all as i'm hearing behind me is just the little pitter patter of her feet on my floor and so i was trying to rearrange her bed to like be like no you stay here so that you know just for the for the listeners so they do not hear just little pitter pattering of dog feet behind me or think that i installed a waterfall feature or something but uh, no i I do see so thank you to i I do sympathize i do sympathize with the uh with the teaching yourself something and then going and taking lessons on it. Um, it not to the level of golf and not, not necessarily in my adult life, but I, I had never snowboarded before. And when I was 16, um, one of my best, one of my best friends, her mom, uh, took us up to Mount hood and we did, we did snowboard rentals and all that. And I kinda, I had about three or four hours on the mountain, just, to myself and kind of like teaching myself how to not fall on my ass. Yeah. And her mom ended up, uh, once she had found out that I had never snowboarded before, just bought us both lessons. And so after three or four hours on the mountain and figuring it out on my own, then I went and took, uh, took a lesson for beginners. And then the very first time down the mountain after the lessons, I found myself, naturally doing like what I had taught myself before the lessons. And then in my brain, it clicked, Oh wait, no, you're supposed to do this and overcorrected and biffed it and smashed my head into the snow and gave myself a concussion. And the rest of the time on the mountain was horrible (laughs) because I, because I was just, yeah, I was just trying to remember. I was multiple thoughts in your head and you're fighting the muscle memory that you built and you're thinking thoughts that, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sure like that'll translate over. Like if you like, I'm sure if I ever went and and took golf lessons, it's, it's gonna, um, it's gonna be weird for me because like all the golfing I've done is self-taught. So I'm sure my swing is horrible. My stance is all wrong. You know, I'm, I'm pulling instead of pushing where, you know, all this stuff where I should, you know, and then the first couple of times that I would I'll probably play after I would ever get lessons. It's totally going to screw with me because I'm going to be halfway through what feels natural. And then my brain will go, Nope, don't do that. Correct this. And you know, then I'm losing all the golf balls. I will. Yes. And I will say like, as an adult, one thing that's helpful is even that, I mean, I was getting pretty frustrated afterward. I got a bucket of balls to practice what we've gone through telling myself it's a process. And so that's helpful as a kid. I think when you're learning, it's harder to like tell yourself that you may not eat. So whatever. So, even though I'm not feeling it, I'm thinking it. And then the other thing is that like this instructor is really good about like, Hey, I'm not going to put too many thoughts in your brain. Here's what we're focusing on. Do this, do it again. Go back. Look at yourself in the mirror. See that? Nope. This up here. There you go. Now go. 
okay, now do it again. And so at least I know what I have to work on Ryan. Uh, Unlike some of these teams, I don't know. This is a bad transition because I'm actually not controlling the show. Why don't I just hand it right back to you? Uh, we've we've decided that we're going to stay away from politics stuff. So the jokes we had in the beginning are as much as we're going to say about it. I think that's a fair uh, a fair assumption. Although at some point, Ryan, we should get you on. Remember, Polly Sai, my brother and I are recording probably at some point this week, and um, probably going to be just us two. But the next time, I'll be giving you a call. But for today's show, oh, our best. I don't podcast, get. I don't get the the post walls announcement bump. God, I <laughs> can I make a can I make a pitch? My family comes from Minnesota. I have time that I've spent in Minnesota. My extended family is still out in Minnesota. I can offer a Minnesotan perspective. That's a good point. And so we'll, you know, we're negotiating when we're recording this. So I'll, I'll keep you in mind and maybe we can make it work for everybody. I mean, the thing is that you and my brother both are like responsible adults. Um, actually, I could break maybe on the on the show. I can break that I've signed an offer letter for a job. Just waiting for that drug test to come back. Hopefully all that heroin. I should, no, just kidding. Um, but yeah, so uh, that should be finalized soon. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, you and my brother are both busier than I am at the at the current moment. But Ryan, enough about us, even though that is why people tune in, because they love you and they tolerate me. What are we talking about today? <laughs> Uh, we got a couple things on deck. Uh, you know, it, it's been long feared that the Blazers are going to, you know, leave the city and they they had a lease agreement that came up. So we'll, we'll chat about that in a little bit. Uh, people are va- massively overreacting in my opinion to a, uh, some Scoot Henderson news on a, on an agent change. And, but I wanted to start off with, uh, you know, the thing that I think everybody's mostly watching sports wise, and that's the Olympics. And, uh, you know, I'll just start it off with this. Have you partaken much in Olympic viewing, not just just you know basketball and you know whether it's the the but full olympic teams men or women's olympic sports i'm like no sir i have not well hey if we learned anything from shooting you can just go through a horrible divorce take up a hobby and then become an olympic medalist at it so uh by go. the way do you think uh, that is the weirdest story ever um that the the shooter i can't remember what country he's from i just i think it was turkey so no so, yes. ah, whatever Correct. Tur- yeah. but but goes through a horrible divorce and then takes up shooting like does his ex-wife read that news story and go like this is alarming <laughs> yeah i mean it's you became an olympic level shooter out of anger <laughs> At me. Uh, on the one hand, you're like, oh, cool. Like he invested his time and energy learning a skill. On the other hand, it's shooting a gun. So, yeah, I, that is a little strange. Um, was that the dude who was like very nonchalant about it with the hand in the pocket and he didn't yeah. have all the fancy stuff? Yeah. He's yeah, you're seeing all the, the sensation. And I love it. And the um, um, the uh, pole vaulter whose penis did not get in the way of his jump and set Ooh. a new world record from Sweden. Uh, he actually struck struck the shooter pose, put put the hand out or like kind of in his waistband and just and just kind of stood back like that as an homage to that when he just set a new world record yesterday. But in, in that regard, have you been watching the Olympics in general or, and are you an yeah. Olympics fan? Uh, yeah, we have been watching. Um, I'd say I'm a fan. I, it's fun to all the different sports. They have skateboarding, rock climbing, kayaking, three on three basketball, sorry, three V three basketball. (laughs) It actually is. It's pretty cool. It reminds me of like the first couple of Olympic games in the modern era. Ryan, did you know that they had different competitions that we do no longer have today, such as architecture, sculpture, poetry. Can you imagine poetry is an Olympic sport? I just, I, I love it. And I do I mean, think like, <laughs> I can, I think the one I'm most interested in would be sculpture. Like what's your yeah. time limit? And like, is it Good just, question. they, pl- they plop a block of marble in front of you and they're like, begin. And then it's like, what can you do in like three cool, hours? To be honest. Um, so yeah, man, I've been watching, um, like, I, well, a, have you been watching and B just going to slide this question in here? Cause I have an answer to it. As you've been watching, are there any either brand new competitions you wish could be incorporated into the Olympics or like maybe a modification of an existing one that you're like, I'd really like to see that. So yeah. What's your, what's your level of Olympic interest? 
Uh, I have been watching. It has been on in my house probably nonstop since the start. The wife and I, and it's not really anything that we ever just, it, it's, it's one of those weird things where it's like you just find out about these, your, your partner's <laughs> yeah, interest totally. in things. Like, I guess like, the Olympics I've, are happening now. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. I've, always, I've always been, in, like, an Olympics junkie. Uh, I'm I'm a bigger fan of the summer games than I am the winter games because the summer games has so many sports that I grew up playing. Um, and and so, like, when my like wife and I got together... <laughs> I can say I I would have cleared that jump, but, (laughs) but, uh, uh, but no, you know, like four four years ago was the first, first summer Olympics games of our relationship, you know, as we had been dating, uh, we'd been together for a couple of years by then, but, uh, actually married a couple of years together by then. Sorry. I forget. We're almost going on a decade now. Um, (laughs) But it was just, that's when I was like, wait, you like the Olympics? She's like, oh yeah, it was on, on all the time. And so we literally, I will turn the TV on and I will turn it to Peacock before I leave for work in the morning. I'll turn it to Peacock and I will turn it on gold zone, which is an absolute freaking gem of a program for watching Olympic sports coverage. My only complaint More is like that it turns metal. off. <laughs> Get it? Right. Yes. Sorry. Yes. The joke Nailed was there, it. but um, bump. <laughs> but uh but, but no i i absolutely love love the gold zone it is a fantastic i don't know if it can't be a ripoff there has to be they, somebody has to be paying money to the nfl for them copying the red zone but it's so great because it's it bounces around to so many sports you have quad view you can select right from there it literally takes you to if anybody's going to be setting a world record winning a medal all that stuff uh the sports that i pay attention to the most i'm a big track and field guy so I uh, shot put watching uh, Ryan Corser, who's, you know, local oh, yeah. guy f- from down in Boring, Oregon, uh, watching him uh, for the third straight year uh, medal in it, uh, just absolutely destroying the competition. I felt so bad. Uh, there was, I want to say, um, a, a Jamaican shot putter who it started raining when when they were going through their final throws and just oh. absolutely slipped on his turn and biffed it. And his official throw was like a meter and a half. Well, there like, was a, just, it's it was it you, was so it was so tragic to watch. But anyways, yeah. Well, just quickly, it's funny you say that because we were watching shot put. Unfortunately, there was a competitor from New Zealand uh, at the Ottawa, New Zealand, who got hurt, and so he couldn't. His last few were not very good. But I noticed something, Ryan. The competitors, if they threw, if they had a throw they didn't like, they would then step on the little box thing to, to disqualify the throw yeah, and not have to, it to actually, get a fault. Yeah. Which is funny. Cause it's like, come on. Like you are you really like that should count as a zero. Like if you're going to have a throw, you don't like, and you don't want it to, to go towards your aggregate, then yeah. it should count as a zero. It shouldn't count as it shouldn't be a no counties, but um, so did you watch but, any skateboarding though? I did, and I asked my kids what they were doing with their life because it was the women's uh, women's street skate okay, final, yeah. and every competitor out there was 13 and 14 years old, and I had my 13 and 14 year old down doing uh, doing chores at the time, and I just kept pointing to the TV. I was like, "You're older than that kid. You're older than that kid. Stop doing the laundry. And, get your ass on the skateboard. You've got yeah rubber you know. bones, and you're not going to get hurt. So get out there and do it." My my daughter, the only one in uh, of the two that knows she can probably get away with it, and so she clapped back and said, "How many Olympic medals do you have again, Dad?" So, point taken, <laughs> and then I stopped. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we we've watched some of that. Uh, I I've and I've probably watched more three v three than I have regular Olympic basketball, just because I am absolutely fascinated that an entire version of the sport that ice cube invented not all well, like or well, not okay. invented, but pop, popularized, popularized is now an olympics is now an olympic sport it's he turned the like, 3v3 into a professional league and it's now in the olympics it's like the pickleball to tennis you know what i mean like it's like it's like 3v3 is to basketball pickleball is to tennis you've taken the sport you've shrunk it down right less cardiovascular demand it's why you can have jimmer for debt apparently on the team like 
By the way, like hey, America taking he's this. He's out. He's out. He just went through a catastrophic injury. He has to have multiple surgeries. Okay, that's, well, shout out, prayers up to Jimmer. But, like, you know, the U.S. taking this not seriously at all. Yeah, three three is cool. Like, I get it. Like, it's a more, you know, compact version. There's less time commitment. Um, kind of it's more relatable that, to the average fan. I mean, who hasn't totally, just played yeah. a pickup game in a rec gym? Right. It's, yeah, it's kind of, it's easier to keep track of everybody at the same time, right? Keep track of six people rather than ten. Reminds me a little bit of at the beginning of the Olympics of rugby sevens, you know, rather than 15 aside mm-hmm. rugby union, they had rugby sevens, seven aside. And those games went quick. They went really fast. They were done. Like, I mean, what they're like 25 minute games. Anyway. Yeah. Um, if, and, so, and, and in regards to a game, if I could tweak yes. anything with any, okay. with any Olympic sport archery, it's too high tech. And as somebody flaming who grew arrows, up, is what you're saying, not flaming arrows though. I am open, off I, of someone's head. I'm not that I'm open to both these ideas. I can be convinced <laughs> to allow these in there. Uh, I do believe insurance that there, would be through the roof. <laughs> there's going to be need to be a little bit more stringent qualification processes for, for those, but, but no, I think it's become too, too, uh, too high tech. The compound bows nowadays, I say, if you want to do this, let's bring it back to old school Robin Hood medieval style. Just get a basic bow and then let me see how well you can shoot. Have them wait. Have them make it. They get them. It's like Survivor Challenge. They have the materials. (laughs) They have to construct the bow. And that would actually be, I mean, it would be so, a little So extra. now you have that that old school callback, like sculpting, in which we yes. opened with talking about. You are sculpting your own bow, Crafting, and then yeah. you must shoot it. Okay. And you must shoot it. Now, I like I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm, I'm also okay with the fact that the, the sculpting and making of your own bow can be an off-camera thing. That you can just, I can just know that you did it, but well, you have okay, to, so, you, you have to do it like the day before you, the day before you shoot and you know, it has to be judged. Like, just give like, me what your sculpting score was or what your building oh, score was. And then let me see you shoot. I like that too. We could split the middle and just, they get the bow all the same string, all the same. They have to string the bow so that the tension, right? Like the knots, like Mm-hmm. Maybe they're allowed to like gently modify the bow. Anyway, we can figure this out. Um, but yeah, that, modifi- that's probably be, that, that's my biggest modification. I, w- I want to see like old it. school archery. Yeah, I'm with you. Like the new bows, they have like 17 different pulleys. And so you pull it back this much and it creates this much tension. It's like, are you really mm-hmm. doing anything at that point? The modification yeah. I want to see, Ryan, is in swimming. Uh, as you may or may not know, my understanding is that when you are swimming, you have 15 meters to stay under the water before you have to then crest and begin mm-hmm. whatever stroke you're competing in. Ryan, I believe it's 20, 20, I believe. Fair enough. Ryan, I think we should create the dolphin stroke, get under the water, hold your breath and keep going. Let them go as far as they want to go. If they want to stay under the water the whole time, let them, if someone's got such big lungs, they can take a big breath and they can just stay under the water for like a minute, 90 seconds. And they're just screaming under there. Why not let them do it? Let's create this new dolphin stroke. It would be good TV. They would go faster. It would be really interesting. It'd be compelling. Like, come on, let's make how it many more medals would Michael Phelps have won if that was allowed? Cause I mean, it's, it, it's the, it's the, to kind of gently bridge a topic. Like there was all of that weird, fucking fuss about the Albanian female boxer and, and all that crap and misinformation about, about her, um, and claiming that, you know, she was a man that was beating up women, all of that, not true. But the thing that I, I find the most humorous about that is they say, you know, it's an, it's an unfair advantage. If, a if a man were to compete in a woman's sport for the Olympics, because just genetically they're they're you know, there's X, Y, and Z look at Michael Phelps. He is literally yeah. double jointed. Uh, he, he, his body li- produces less lactic acid than, um, so his muscles get tired. It, it takes way longer for his muscles to get tired. He has double the average lung capacity, like all these other physical attributes that put him so far and away that are all genetic that put him so far and away ahead of all these other swimmers. So, but so just a, my sidetrack tangent on that, if you're going to bitch about one thing, you got to bitch about, you know, it's, it's called being an Olympic athlete, but how many, I, 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 
shudder to think about the number of Olympic medals that somebody with twice the lung capacity of any other swimmer in the pool, <laughs> how many more he water. could like, could I'd say what's he good for? Like two and a half trips back before he's got to come up. Like, does he Probably. make literally only one physical breaststroke in the whole race? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. Like it's, and actually, I mean, maybe, maybe we will get into it, but like, I think you bring up a good point. It's like, you know, the categories that we've had since time immemorial with sports have been by gender, right? Men, women, right? Men compete over there. Women compete over there. And the point being, as you were saying, because, you know, men have certain physical advantages that women generally don't enjoy. Right. So it's unfair. And to your point, yes, there are men and women who have enormous genetic advantages. So here's what I'd like to see, Ryan. I would like to see at not today, but someday that we can get smart enough to start categorizing people based on their biological baseline. Think about it this way. Wrestling, boxing, how do we categorize them? By weight class, right? So, mm-hmm. and we have men and women's division, but then we're basically saying, hey, if you're heavier, right, you might have more of an advantage. So we're not going to put up this 125 pound dude against someone who weighs 225. So let's just take that a couple steps further. And yeah, I'd love to see it. I would love to see Ryan one day in 2045. There's an NBA for average athleticism, middle-aged men, just like me, where I can compete <laughs> and make millions of dollars. Let's go. But no, I think it's a good point. Like, and it's true. Like, how are you supposed to control for all of this stuff? Right. Like it's just so, yeah. Anyway, we're going to push that aside. Swimming underwater. Let's see it. Would love to see it. I think it'd be fun. Let's do it. I hate to burst your bubble, but uh, in 2045, you will no longer be in the middle-aged man age category. So sorry. (laughs) Medical science is going to come so far. I am going to de-age, you know, my hair will become even blonder. It's going to be just fabulous. You just wait and see, buddy. It's going to be great. We're living in weird Uh, times. (laughs) While we're talking about swimming, there's a massive underutilization of the underwater camera in Mm -hmm. this year's swimming events. I feel as though in years past. The uh, dolphin stroke. Yeah, I feel in years past there have been a lot more underwater camera shots, which I always previously thought was weird, but now that they're not there, it's I feel like I'm missing something. So NBC, Peacock, let uh call me. I I'll 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 Water with no experience whatsoever, I will tell you how to get do your job better. <laughs> get a get a Google Pixel Ooh. and put it under the water. You'll be fine. And for the dolphin swim, you can put the GoPro on a do- live dolphin that you unleash in the pool. <laughs> yes. Yes. Humans V dolphins. That's what we need. Actually. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> oh, kind of like the, what was it? I think, wasn't it Michael Phelps that did the, the man versus shark. And then it was that, that huge lead up to that thing years ago. And then turns out it was man versus computer generated shark who we said swims this fast. We yeah. can't actually put him in the water with a shark. And, and yet, well, we all not like idea. nodded. Yeah, well, we all nodded our heads and we're like, no, that makes sense. I feel as though the country was collectively disappointed and be like, but we still want to see him race a fucking shark. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great. You promised uh, a shark. A <laughs> little dangerous, but yeah. I mean, can you just put the shark in a different lane and just drag some food in front of it? I Anyway. Well, that's what, what they was... did, but they, but they made it virtual. Like, they had the buoys and the lanes set up, and so, like, I but think... But in a long cage. I, I feel like you could do when it. When I went on. to go watch that, I was like, oh my god, they're actually going to release a shark. And then it started, and here comes CGI fake shark. And I'm like... Yeah. What the hell's the I point like of the could, I feel like they could have pulled that off, to be honest. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Continuing on. All right. So I think I think we're done with the Olympics. It's 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 fun. I love it. Gold Zone. If you have the ability to, if you have Peacock, watch it. Uh, help me join my Change.org petition of that they must carry the coverage on farther than two two p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I want that shit from five o'clock in the morning until at least five o'clock at night. I don't care what kind of union contract those four individuals have signed. They he will work care what time and they will dance for me. Patty. He cares about what time it is in Los Angeles, California, because he's in the Pacific time zone. Come on. You're in Paris. If you complain about, oh, I'm having to work too much in Paris. They're making them out of swim touch. in a poop river, Ryan. Hey, by the way, the, okay, one more thing on this. The Seine River, right, in Paris, they 
cleaned it. That they spent to- eight months cleaning and trying to get it passing a coli tests. I feel compelled, Ryan, to shout out Oregon and Portland area lawmakers for being able to take the steps necessary, get the funding, get the work done so we can actually swim in the Willamette River. That's actually a big deal. When I was growing up, it was like, do not touch that river. Don't go near it. It's dirty. It's gross. You're going to get sick. And they spent a lot of money building a lot of infrastructure to keep our poop out of the river, even when it's rainy. And now guess what, Ryan? Now you and I can swim in the in the Willamette and we will not see any three-eyed fish, at least as far as I know. What? And Paris can't even do that. Portland, what? Paris. Count it. When does when does the infrastructure kick in to keep the poop from getting in the river in the first place? Because it seems like it still overflows, but that the only thing they've become Not really good often. at is 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 cleaning it up really quick. It well, still happens. Now, to be fair, if you Google, if anyone's interested, and this is not a sexual term, big pipe project. <laughs> Portland. Just be careful when you Google that. Okay. It's a what very specific ha- search. <laughs> yeah, it's a big pipe project, Portland. My understanding is what happens is that they have created lit. Yes. An enormous, like 30 foot diameter sewage pipe. Normally what would happen without that much volume is that you would have overflows every rain all the time. I think it was something like 150 or 200 times a year. Now it's only during like the most torrential downpours that there's too much water that it can't handle it. So no, it's actually not getting into the river in the first place. That's my understanding. So okay. good on the lawmakers, good on the public for funding it. Like we, Portland, Oregon has done something Paris cannot, which is create a poop free river zone. Let's go. Next step, homelessness. <laughs> Listen, one, one reasonable thing at a time. <laughs> Yeah. I, all right. Anyway. Okay. Zoom is saying right. Spe- What are we doing? Spe- <laughs> speaking of homes, the, How the are trailblazers. We 30 minutes into this. this is crazy. Cause, cause it's us, but speaking of homes, <laughs> That's true. uh, the Portland trailblazers have signed a, uh, an extent in a, a lease extension with the city of Portland to maintain their home at Moda, uh, at Maybe least through 2030 with an additional five-year extension that they could they could offer up through 2035. So this has been a longstanding thing, a longstanding worry that us Blazer fans have had uh, with all the tumultuousness and ownership and everybody hoping, praying, and uh, uh, doing everything they can to try to get Jody Allen to sell this team. Uh, would the team move? Um, the organization itself has, has signed this new lease agreement. Um, it comes with a couple little interesting caveats, like um, the Motor Center ownership is getting transferred to the city of Portland for the low, low price of $1. Uh, yeah. I feel as though that there, there was some prices writing uh, in, involved in that. Um, but And then maybe you can help me out because you have worked in uh, various forms of government and, and and done stuff specifically like with, with the city of Portland. Uh, I know this maybe isn't your area of expertise, but the details regarding like helping fund the renovations if they should need it. Um, I do know that somewhere in this agreement uh, involves the, uh, uh, what was it called? The, the Albania project of revitalizing oh, the Albina and re- Vision Trust. Yeah. Yes. The Albina Vision Trust and kind of reconnecting some things down there. But are, yep. are, are you familiar with any of these details or any of these, this stuff that's come out in this reporting on this? Uh, Yes, a, a few of them, not all of them. The Albina Vision Trust, I do want to, that's a great thank you. This would have been great for me to think of beforehand. I said it on Twitter. I believe that the Portland Trailblazers partnership with Albina Vision Trust may be the most significant public private partnership that Portland's ever seen. And here's why Albina Vision Trust is a 501c3 nonprofit. And they are, to your point, they're trying to reconnect a series of Portland neighborhoods that were mostly demolished by the construction of various highways. Also, some of it was like eminent domain to try to make room for Emanuel Hospital, and they didn't even use some of that. So they bulldozed like dozens and dozens of houses, traditionally black neighborhoods, in order to make room for a hospital that was never built. Okay. And now that we have I-5 there, you have disconnected these neighborhoods. And so part of what's happening is that this 501c3 is gathering money. They have different thought partners, artists. Uh, they have Nike involved. Nike got involved really, uh, quite early. They now have the Trailblazers Wasn't involved. Wasn't that four hundred million that Phil Knight yes. is and Nike have committed? Okay, correct. So um, the point of this is to try to reconnect this neighborhood to cap 
part of I-5 so that people and bikes can can tra- traverse it, and then to create affordable housing so that people can actually live there again. This is really, really cool. It's amazing that the Blazers are partnering. I really like that. I actually, I'm really dumb. I hadn't thought until you just said it that <laughs> part of the city of Portland being willing to do this like stopgap uh, you know, lease with the Blazers because it's not a long-term lease was the Blazers' commitment to Albina Vision Trust. And I do think it's important because, Ryan, like if anyone's familiar with Portland's inner east side, there are parts of it that are really cool. And there are parts of it that it's just like desolate hellscape, like nasty old highways and railroad shit that's like not being used anymore. Like it's truly like it could be better and like, and, and it's going to be better. And like, I think that we're going to look back in 20 or 15, 20 years and be like, dang, like, this is like a place that people actually want to go to. There's been, you know, I I think pretty advanced planning to get a music venue down there, which is pretty sweet, like an outdoor Mm -hmm. amphitheater situation, which is, I think live nation is leading that effort. So all to say good things happening in and around the Moda center, good job on the blazers for supporting Albina vision trust. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good cause. One of the things in there too that was kind of nice to see is like with the um, you know the the Blazers organization will maintain you know operations and whatnot for for the Moda Center and I, I believe that uh, even though the, with the city's ownership um, their their cost commitment to any f- future upgrades and repairs and whatnot is capped at a fifty percent cost and and that cost is is um, comes out of a fund that's uh, filled by parking fees and everything from all, all the games down there. So it's not like a, an additional tax or a levy or anything that's coming out of the you know actual city's coffers. So that that's nice to see that that's part of the agreement. And that the Blazers are are still responsible for doing it. I I I'm happy that that all of this stuff is wrapped in together because one of one of my biggest complaints, and I know it's it's a complaint of of many people, is that when you go to a Blazer game, there's not much to do down there before or after. It is, you know, there's there's a couple little cool bars, but they're hard to get to, especially with how it's tight the traffic environment there, isn't is. It? Again, because it of is. these fucking highways that just cut through there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, like, to to be able to use use this funds to reconnect these neighborhoods that have yeah. that have been destroyed over time for for greed and all this stuff and government interference and that that's one thing. But then to to improve the neighborhood by you know uh. uh increasing, you know, venues and activities and restaurants and, and bars and, and things that people would want to do down there is, is just a good want thing to because go it spent their money there. Right. Like, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what we want. Like, and, and have it be where it's not just because they're down there for a blazer game or a winter right. Hawks game yeah, or a concert, right. have it be an area where having Moda there is cool, but Hey, they also have this going on and all this new and, and, and nifty stuff and things that I want to do and places I want to eat and, and, you know, the things I want to see down there year round. So right. I, I'm, and, I'm super excited about it. And I do think part like, so where we're living in new Haven, as I see zoom is saying three thirty. are we going <laughs> to, are we going to break and come back? What are we doing? We're just, we're, nah, we're we can wrap it up life. with this. I think, I think we've, I think well, we've had a good one. We can wrap up this quick, quick point. Well, I want you to get your last point in about, um, anyway, I'll leave it, but we live in new Haven, Connecticut. We live right downtown. We live in a new building. We're very fortunate, but this new building also has like a little bodega at the bottom of the building. Right. And there's like a little mm-hmm. grocery store nearby. And then there's like a Thai place. And then there's like another corner store. And then there's a Japanese place. And then there's a Mexican, like all within walking distance. And so I think these kinds of projects that you're combining people living in a highly dense area with things that those people living there would appreciate a dry cleaner, a jewelry store. It's actually quite helpful to have those things. And then also things that tourists would enjoy too. That's the key. You have people who are living there. They have their needs met. You can walk around, do shit. And then people also want to go in there and spend money. Uh, Ryan, you had one more topic. Let's hit it quick. Rapid fire. I do. Uh, last little bit. Uh, uh, Scoot Henderson. Um, he has changed representations. He is. Ne- 
He is now being represented by uh, Clutch Sports and Rich Paul. I think this puts Rich Paul's total up to like 35, 36 NBA players under his belt. Uh, Brandon, does this mean a damn thing? Because I've seen so many overreactions to some of this stuff of that. Oh, it's starting now to get Scoot out of Portland and Clutch representation. And for everybody who remembers, Yusuf Nurkic represented by Clutch. I don't think Yusuf Nurkic ever strong armed the Blazers into anything. (laughs) <laughs> no, I think it's great. I think Clutch is, you know, I a, a good agency. I feel like they get decent deals for their players. I don't think that their deals are even necessarily like unfriendly to teams either. I'm all for it. I think that Clutch <laughs> I would say Yusuf Nurkic is a, one of the more notable examples of of not this, but usually Clutch carries players that they're they're somewhat discerning in their clientele and uh I think it's a good sign. And so I'm all for it and I, you know, frankly LeBron James, as he transitions from his playing career into what does he want to do? Maybe coaching, maybe media, maybe becoming Ownership. a bigger part of clutch, maybe becoming an owner, maybe some combination of those things. I, I have nothing. I have nothing bad to say about it. Good job. Scoot, get yours. Loving it. It's a little weird that a uh, rookie going into a second year is changing ownership, but I guess her, uh, I think it's a vote of confidence, man. I, I do too, but then it's also like I, I'd have to dive a little more into it. Is he dumping the management that he had when he went with the G League Ignite? Is this what he got directly out of high school for that? I don't know, but if you want to find out, you can find us at we like the blazers.com or are we good? At like the yeah, blazers on Twitter. Not anymore. You ruined it now. Uh, sorry. Uh, we have 30 seconds left at the witty Ryan. We appreciate all of you. We're proud to be a part of the Blazers Ed family of podcasts and uh, with. <laughs> Wow, I'm really failing here uh, with uh, Trail Daddy. Rogue Dave Media. Deckard, Rogue Media and Rip City Roundtable with Corey Dickman. I'm Brandon. That's right. We appreciate you all. And go Blazers. Go Blazers. Peace out.